just got the himself back uh, off the beach and back into match mode and he had three wins so he comes here full of confidence Lou Hyerson a 19 year old is his opponent it's day one of snooker's China Championship we're in Guangzhou and it's John Higgins to get underway best of nine against Lou Hyerson Higgins comes here looking for the 29th world ranking event of his career. He won this tournament last season. It was an invitation event then. But he finished off in the final. He was seven each in the final with Stuart Bingham and he finished off with three consecutive centuries. So he's got happy memories of Guangzhou. I think that John Higgins will be taking any liberties with this young man. Five years ago, he got to the quarter-finals of the International Championship. Which would have made him round about 14, 15. an attacking shot he played there he found the gap between the reds uh, a little unfortunate to have gone in off but he found the gap between everything nothing easy left for John Higgins a lot of balls to dodge if he takes his red on to the left corner change of mind pair of shoes he was got on there nice to see a bit of character out there Well, he's considering taking this long red on, the one that Higgins refused. As I said, a lot of reds to avoid. And that was difficult. And he's left a great opportunity for Higgins here. That was a nice shot, using the knuckle of the pocket to take him the right side of the blue. The two reds that are closest to the left corner are stopping the black going into that pocket. So he could play for those. If indeed they go. Let's not forget he was in control in that world final early on, playing superbly on the first day. Selby hung on and then, of course, turned it round on the second day. Higgins did mount a little comeback towards the end, and it was that business with the roll into the black, which uh, frankly didn't really have any bearing on things. 
Selby lost the frame, came out, made a century. Next frame, and of course, won 18-15. Proper snooker match, wasn't it, between two great players? Oh, well, it was a superb match. I could not see Higgins losing from the position he was in and the way he was playing. He was playing superbly. But somehow, as you say, Selby hung on and then started playing like Higgins was playing earlier. And of course, it's bound to affect your opponent. You see a train coming at you. Great final. Great players. Searching. Higgins just getting his arm going a little here, taking these loose reds. Not bothered about the black at the moment, and all those, all those two reds. Oh, we run slightly there. Wanted to be straighter on this red to the left corner. <coughs> Just about the right side of the blue. Hasn't played for the pink as yet because it would probably go on to the brown spot. Pink spot looks to be held. This time he's decided to play for the pink. Because we saw him at the World Cup, but uh, and him and Anthony McGill looked a formidable team, but they didn't actually get out of the group, which was a surprise, really. They finished behind Thailand and Northern Ireland. Since then, he's played at the Hong Kong Masters, the big invitation event. He was 4-2 up to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last eight, lost 5-4. This may have gone wrong. Yeah. Didn't go as intended. Still has a red to both middles. But wanted to be on something a lot easier than these two reds. He moved the red away from the pink spot, fully expecting to be on reds. Easy reds. Needs a good shot here. Tight angle. Oh. <laughs> First it was in, then it was out. Back in again. And this time finished a little straight. I'm going to look at those two reds just below the pink, see if they're a plant to that right corner. to consider the more difficult pink and again this could go wrong and that's if the pink goes nope doesn't go so see the brown the easy blue gets him the red, but where's the next red coming from? Played it with some safety in mind, but he's pushed a red on. 
Not easy to get to a colour from it though. Not easy to pop the red in that pocket. <laughs> and okay in the other one. He's still young, he's only 19, but he, he'd been on the tour and off the tour again. He's a former World Under-21 champion, he won that when he was 14. But he was relegated two years ago, got back on this year by winning the Asian Championship. I think he's just suffering with a, a few nerves at the moment. It's a big thing playing Higgins in front of his own crowd. John Higgins has been a professional now for a quarter of a century. And still going strong. He, yeah, as I say, starts the season second in the world. Six. I mean, if you told him that when he turned pro at 17, 25 years' time, A, you'll still be playing, and B, you'll be world number two. He just would not have believed it. He couldn't conceive it at that age. And of course, with his experience, he'll want to exploit any nerves that Lou Hyshen has, which will grow, you think, if uh, Higgins starts to take a lead in the match. Searching. Just a couple of reds needed then. 14. Just checking the score. Pink puts him 65 in front. So that will do nicely. Just another red to make sure. Front. Yeah, the fluke uh, wasn't key from Lou Heish and Mr. Blue straight away. 21. The winner of the match plays Chris Wakelin in the last 64. Remember, this has been held over. He was excused having to qualify as he won the tournament last year. 28. 29. 36. So many ranking events, you, you feel that Higgins is going to add to his tally of 28 at the moment. He's tied with Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, still going strong. And Steve Davis, they're all in joint second on the all-time list. Stephen Hendry out in front on 36. So who's going to break the tie with Davis, Higgins or O'Sullivan? Pretty sure one of them's going to do it. Still playing superbly, both of them. Inch perfect position on the yellow. And this is just what Lou didn't want. He needs to get his arm going. His eyeing. Fiddle of the table, and he's going to struggle. Unless he can get an easy chance. He hasn't had an easy chance as yet. That was a tough blue he took on after the fluke. Six to one. Yes, I do think Higgins was helped by having to go to Preston last week. He just had uh, three competitive matches, won them all. Six Getting back six. into the swing of things again as the season gets back underway in earnest. Now Higgins, 72 in the frame. So 72 clearance to the pink from John Higgins gives him the opening frame. He's looking confident here in the opening round of this China Championship. He leads Lu Haishan in Guangzhou by one frame to nil.
John Higgins won, Lu Haishan nil. The score here in the opening round of the China Championship. It's best of nine. Lu Haishan getting frame two underway. Not the best break off shot he's ever played. No, just when he needed something good. He leaves a half chance for Higgins. As I said earlier, he's got his aim. Could be okay on the blue to this corner pocket. Might just be able to hold for that red to the right of the pink. Yeah, well held. That wasn't easy. Could be on it to the middle. Not easy, but if it goes in, he's on an easy red. Yeah, good shot. Now, can he see enough of this red? Hard to play at a pace and bounce the cue ball off the cushion. 14. Now, may play up for the blue here instead of the black to go into the reds. 15. And that is just about right. I'd like to catch the pink full in the face. Yep, he's okay. I think he's on choice of reds. It's easier to the left corner, but this one is blocking the black going into that pocket. And easy enough to play for the black, even though he's playing with the spider. Now he might try and play a cannon to the pink here. Doesn't need to because there's a few reds that he could play for. But he could open more reds playing the cannon to the pink. Should be on a red. Break builders of all time, Higgins. 673 centuries. And if he decided he didn't want to go into the pink there. 29. Who are we to argue? It's the other thing, isn't it? He's only 102 centuries behind Stephen Hendry. I say only, but he made 50 last season, Higgins. So a year or so's time, a couple of years' time, maybe he could surpass the great man and go into second place. Hendry retired when he was 43, Higgins is 42, he's still going. Yeah, not just going, but really going. Well, eight one four sevens as well. Made one uh, at his own Scottish Open last season.
but clearly he's looking to sort of swamp Lou Hyshen early on here because, as I say, he's already a little bit nervy, I think, at the start, which is understandable, but if he's coming to the table in the match thinking he's absolutely got to make the most of the chance, otherwise he won't get another shot, then he'll be under even more pressure. And this frame may be over, frankly. Well, he'd be expecting to win from here now after that beautiful split. Just coming a little bit further as Lou looks on there, hoping that he gets a chance. Fifty-three. And again, perfectly played. Got the speed of the table. Absolutely perfect. So, 72 break in the first frame, and already 64. looking good to make it 2-0, with a big break here. 65. 65. 65. Just the blue needed. Can concentrate on making his first century of this event. Of course, just after winning this <laughs> title last season, he went to Coventry and won the Champion of Champions. So within the space of a couple of weeks, he'd won 300,000, none of which counted towards his ranking. Counted towards his bank balance, though. 83. <laughs> Equally important. But a good point, nevertheless. But those pounds gone on his ranking. He would have been well clear at number two. You wonder, though, Joe, how Mark Selby is going to be overtaken any time soon. He's just miles in front. And he's still playing superbly well. And that's uh, another point. He's going to be in number one for a long time to come, I think. Yeah, and it's not just the World Championship, which, of course, he won. He won the two of the biggest ranking events, the International Championship and the UK Championship, so that all helped as well. Anyway, Higgins... A couple of balls away from making a century. Mm, didn't get enough side on the cue ball. So this red for the century and it's not easy. Well played. Got that cue ball out of Bork as well. He's looking good. He's looking sharp, isn't he? There's been a couple, a couple of key shots, not least the black he potted to the middle earlier on in the break towards the start. Yeah, that was the key shot in this frame for me because he could have left an easy red for Lou Hirschen. And he knew it. That was a chance had he missed it for Lou to start his little bit of a comeback. Seven. 
Hanya nanti ini apa? Hanya nanti ini apa? Well, it's been a great break. Flawless, really. Pressure being heaped on the shoulders of Lou Heish and then to find some sort of response. Right. Terrific stuff from John Higgins. A 1-2-9 to lead 2-0. Yeah, really nice break. He's looking very sharp indeed, is the Scott. Three more needed, and he's through to the second round. Best at the China Championship. Sheng Weili, the referee, setting them up for frame three. Higgins has made a 1-2-9 break following the 72 made in the first frame. Won his first rank in title 1994. So 23 years ago now, the Grand Prix. And he's won, uh, I make it three in China. He won the China International 99, he won the Shanghai Masters 2012 and the International Championship two years ago. That's ranking titles, of course. Well, that shot has freed the black and put his opponent under a little bit of pressure. The red on the right side cushion is just making things a little difficult for Lewisian. to leave a Higgins at an easy chance here. Seeing what he did in the last frame. But decided to have a go, try and pot his way out of trouble, and that's a disaster. Q well finding the pocket, leaving an easy red. So working out a plan, he can play for anything here. He's looking at the next red, which would help with the black, but the two reds by the black spot, he could do with playing for one of those, clearing that black spot area for when he does pot the black. What? Finished a little straight, a little nod there. Didn't like that shot. Now he has to change his plan.
Twelve. Thirteen. Oh, that's a better angle. And it could well come down for those two reds. Could have done with just a little bit harder. Eighteen. Not happy with that. He's on the red, but not ideally. Yep, that was a poor positional shot from blue to red. You'd be disappointed with that, Higgins. And that's a poor safety. That cue ball should have been closer to that ball cushion. He's just suffering at the moment. And if you can see the red, well, that really is a disaster. Higgins straight back in again. What? And the kiss could have been kinder. going from bad to worse. Oh, has he been fortunate? Not left an easy red. Nothing goes there. So I may play the ball to the bolt corner and try and cover that red over the right corner pocket. Just in case he misses. Oh, stroke of luck there for Higgins. Which is always what seems to happen. The guy who needs the luck doesn't get it. Yes, and it could be significant because this young man, Lou Hyshen, just looking for a way in. That could have been a way in, but going to have to wait for another chance. Just looking to get his confidence going, Put, knock a few balls in. Foul. But as it is, he's fouled. Yep, and that'll be going back. <coughs> Trying to... Yes, caught the red this time. Just. Although, he has left a chance at this red. Good shot. Played the snooker in behind the brown, just in case they missed it. And felt that he was going to be on the yellow had it gone in. Worst case scenario, tough snooker. Oh, he's missed it. Well, again, this isn't easy for Lou Haitian.
cue ball going into the reds. No guarantee of position. But you feel he's got to take it on. Yeah, good shot, but as I said, no guarantee of position. And in fact, it's no good. Well, it never rains, but it pours. Red spread as well. Yellow ball. Nominating yellow. Foul, and I miss. The hockey one, Johnny was four. Trying to catch the right side of the yellow to leave the cue ball in the bork area. Won't be too worried about the four points as yet. Doesn't want to catch it full in the face and leave that red onto the right corner pocket. Yellow ball. Oh, the wrong side, but that looks okay. say it looks okay what a shot that was from Higgins wasn't leaving anything on either had he missed it and nicely on the black yeah I said uh, it never rains but it pours at the moment it's absolutely chucking down for Lou Hyerson Higgins is playing well he's got in again he's already in front in the frame chance for 3-0 He's played the shot, and the red must go to the middle. Twenty-five. So just the red required. Looks like it's going to be 3 0. 32. And Lou desperately needs this next frame. Can't see any way back for him from 4 0 down. 3 0 down. It's 3 0 down now, that is. 
But if it does go 4 nil, well. Well, Higgins not really under much what pressure because he's not being punished for the odd error he has made. It's not like he's been made to sit in his chair and dwell on anything. He's been right back at the table doing the damage as he is in this visit. So worrying times with a teenager. Break off shot last frame wasn't good. He needs to think about that as we approach frame four. 63 will do for John Higgins to take a 3 0 lead, and it's a very one sided match at the moment. Three good frames for the Scot. He only needs two more, and he's through the second round. He leads Lou Heishen. 3-0. The break-off shot two frames ago wasn't uh, great, and there is a red again sticking out here. Higgins already 3-0 up, playing well. Made a 1-2-9, remember, in frame two. Well, that's a reprieve, I guess, really, for Lou Hyshen. Yeah, fully expected him to pop that. Red in the bulk area, not the easiest. Being close to the cushion like that. Okay. Yes, it wasn't easy. And look at where the red's finished. Things not just going his way at the moment. And as I say, desperately needs this frame. hit that one anyway near hard enough for the two reds he played for to the right corner he just come past the pink was the shot? The shot previously when he took the red to the middle played up for the blue when he had the red to the right corner to play for the black gave it a lot of study time but decided to take the red to the middle. But he just can't pot anything at the moment. No ovation. And again, he's left a, another red on. So I was saying in the last frame, Higgins has made mistakes, but not being punished.
Would you believe it? He's hit it too hard again. To let off the elevation. Didn't really want to cover the black up. Jogging is full. That's nice, superb. Got to be so accurate with a shot like that. But I guess it helps when you're three 0 up and your opponent's struggling. Five. Now, if he's top side of this red, he might just be able to play the cannon to the red next to the black. It doesn't look like he's got the ideal angle. Six. And that certainly opened things up. Has to concentrate on the blue for the time being. Unless he can play for that red just below the pink. And that looks ideal. Just to leave the cue ball where the red is, Eleven. take the pink to the middle. Twelve. And in one shot, he's cleared the area for the pink as well as the blue. 18. So fear the worst here, fellow Haitian. Nancy. Yeah, Higgins lost a match last season, the best of nine. 4 0 up, but that was to Ding Jun Wee in the Players' Championship. And what we've seen in this match, the way that the both of them have played, just seems almost impossible that he can lose now. Just wants to put this frame away, get himself into that interval with a nice 4 0 lead, and then finish the job when they come back. Circuit one. Circuit two. Thirty-eight. 61 in front with the pink, so another red required. Yes, he has needed two or three chances this frame. But his opponent, like David Sell, hasn't put him under any pressure. Every time he took a red on it was a difficult one or it wasn't ideal. 46. Hasn't got away with anything when he's when he's attempted. So it is gonna be four nil. And a nice little nudge on the red to free the black. Seven. 
60. And could very well be another century here. And the crowd really lapping this one up. Six to eight. Yes, you can have four nils that, you know, you could have four black ball frames that are Six close. This nine. has not been close at all, this match. It's been completely one sided. Oh. Well, misses the black on 69, but uh, it doesn't matter. He's done a lot of damage in the first half of this contest. Breaks of 72, 129, 63 and 69 from Scotland's John Higgins. Feeling very good indeed as he heads off to the interval. One more frame needed for victory. Then he leads Lou Hyacin by four frames to nil. Already that shot tells us that things have not improved. Lou Hyshen. It uh, that could be his last shot, you know. Yep, very well, well could be the way that Higgins is playing. I think he, he came out there deciding to have a go. But his long potting hasn't been there. Well, no potting's been there, really. I'm sure he can play a lot better than this. You don't win the under-21s championship at 14, 15, or whatever it was. What? If he's, if he's not a great player, he just hasn't been able to handle his nerves today, I think. Big thing, though, playing in front of a big crowd on TV against one of the best players that's ever lived. Oh, didn't want to catch the Reds, and that could be a little bit of a reprieve for Loatian. Six. Yeah, it's worth saying that last week in the qualifiers of the European Masters, Luhaishan beat Robert Milkins 4-2. Milkins had two centuries, so Milkins was playing great stuff, but he still beat him. So it's a good win. John Higgins, six. And Higgins has broken down, so it's not over yet. The only thing I can say about Luhaishan is that he has had a go. He hasn't been afraid. He's took the balls on. OK, they haven't gone in, but you need... A little bit of bottle to be able to take the balls on. And there's another one. And he hasn't been fortunate again. Higgins straight back in with a scoring chance. Check on the cue ball there to avoid the reds. And he's OK on the blue. Six. Well, a surprising miss there from Higgins. But again, nothing easy for Lou Haitian. He's got this red to the left corner, but he's got reds to avoid, and this isn't easy. Good pot. Was it a good kiss? Oh, the cue ball has just crept in behind the red. Yeah, I wonder if he walked under a ladder on the way here today. <laughs> Not really had any running. I mean, he hasn't played well, but, you know, just looking for some sort of nice nudge. Well, another brave shot, this. Good shot. And again, he didn't get that nice nudge. He's got the red to the middle, but 
it's missable, and if the pink goes on the black spot, well... Seven. Oh, how unfortunate is that? This has to go in. It has to go in. Oh, well. Full marks for bravery, but I think at that stage, safety was the order of the day. Yeah, I think it's what? just general frustration there. Higgins, though, has got to just concentrate now. You know, he, he was in before he broke down. Sometimes I think if you're a long way in front, under no pressure. But in a way, that's how he's got to treat it here. Just try and get it out of the way. So it's a long week. He's going to have to play every day if he gets to the final. Six. And some tough matches to come. Next opponent, if he wins, Chris Wakelin. Mark Williams Seven. is in that section as well. Mark Allen in that half. Judd Trump actually in that half as well. But first things first, get this one out of the way. This black stopping reds going into the pocket makes things a lot easier now. Punch. Cannon the wrong red. He fully expected to be on the red to the right corner. May have to take the red to the middle if he can see enough of it. This looks good. Just the right amount of left hand side on the cue ball. To leave himself perfect on this red. Thirty-four. Forty-five pounds. The difference, Four. so doesn't need many. Forty-one. No, it's been every inch of whitewash this match. Luhaishan struggled, and in this frame, a little bit unlucky when he did have a chance. Higgins has been strong, he's not been put under too much pressure. He's had some nice breaks along the way. If he pops the black, he's 60 in front with 59 on. So uh, John Higgins is going to be through in double quick time. Remember, this match actually started late because they were having that opening ceremony, so it's not taken him 55. really much more than an hour to win. Chris Wakelin next. I do think, although he didn't win the world final, just the whole experience of being back in the Crucible final 62. must have been uh, such an exciting experience for Higgins. And this has been a quick kill, 62 to follow breaks of 72, 129, 63 and 69. And John Higgins, as I say, in double quick time.
puts himself through to the last 64 of the China Championship. He won this title last year when it was an invitation tournament, so he's already got nice memories of Guangzhou, and they'll be very pleased. Little thumbs up, very pleased with his evening's work here. We'll be seeing him again tomorrow against Chris Wakely and John Higgins then in fine style beats Lou Haishan by five frames to nil. Avoid. And that was difficult. And he's left a great opportunity for Higgins here. That was a nice shot, using the knuckle of the pocket to take him the right side of the blue. The two reds that are closest to the left corner are stopping the black going into that pocket. So he could play for those. If indeed they go. Let's not forget he was in control in that world final early on. Played superbly on the first day. Selby hung on and then, of course, turned it round on the second day. Higgins did mount a little comeback towards Seven. the end, and it was that business with the roll into the black, which, uh, frankly, didn't really have any bearing on things. Selby lost the frame, came out, made a century next frame, and, of course, won 18-15. Proper snooker match, wasn't it, between two great players? <laughs> Well, it was a superb match. I could not see Higgins losing from the position he was in and the way he was playing. He was playing superbly. But somehow, as you say, Selby hung on and then started playing like Higgins was playing earlier. And of course, it's bound to affect your opponent. You see a train coming at you. Great players. Searching. Higgins just getting his arm going a little here, taking these loose reds. Not bothered about the black at the moment, and both the, are those two reds. Over and slightly there, wanted to be straighter on this red to the left corner. Just about the right side of the blue. Played it with one. some safety in mind, but he's pushed a red on. Not easy to get to a colour from it, though. Not easy to pot the red in that pocket. <laughs> and OK, in the other one. He's still young, he's only 19, but he, he's been on the tour and off the tour again. Former world in the 21 champion. He won that when he was 14, but uh, was relegated two years ago. Got back on this year by winning the Asian Championship. I think he's just suffering with a, a few nerves at the moment. It's a big thing playing Higgins in front of his own crowd. John Higgins has been a professional now for a quarter of a century. And still going strong. Yeah, as I say, starts the season 
second in the world. Six. I mean, if you told him that when he turned pro at 17, 25 years' time, A, you'll still be playing, and B, you'll be world number two. He just would not have believed it. He couldn't conceive it at that age. And, of course, with his experience, he'll want to exploit any nerves that Lou Heijen has, which will grow, you think, if uh, Higgins starts to take a lead in the match. Searching. Just a couple of reds needed then. 14. Just checking the score. Pink puts him 65 in front. So that will do nicely. Just another red to make sure. Fun. Yeah, the fluke uh, wasn't key from Lou Heishen, missed the blue straight away. 21. The winner of the match plays Chris Wakelin in the last 64. Remember, this has been held over. He was excused having to qualify as he won the tournament last year. Five years ago, he got to the quarter-finals of the International Championship. Which would have made him round about 14-15. an attacking shot he played there, he found the gap between the Reds. Uh, a little unfortunate to have gone in off, but he found the gap between everything. Nothing easy left for John Higgins. A lot of balls to dodge if he takes his red on to the left corner. Change of mind. Nice pair of shoes. Lou's got on there. Nice to see a bit of character out there. Well, he's considering taking this long red on, the one that Higgins refused. As I said, a lot of reds to avoid. And that was difficult. And he's left a great opportunity for Higgins here. That was a nice shot, using the knuckle of the pocket to take him the right side of the blue. The two reds that are closest to the left corner and stopping the black going into that pocket. So he could play for those. If indeed they go. Oh, the wrong side. But that looks okay. say it looks okay what a shot that was from Higgins wasn't leaving anything on either had he missed it and 
nicely on the black. Yeah, I said uh, it never rains, but it pours at the moment. It's absolutely chucking down for Lou Hyerson. Higgins is playing well. He's got in again. He's already in front in the frame. Chance for 3-0. He's played the shot, and the red must go to the middle. Twenty-five. So just the red required. Looks like it's going to be 3-0. 32. And Lou desperately needs this next frame. What? That was a nice shot using the knuckle pocket to take him the right side of the blue. The two reds that are closest to the left corner are stopping the black going into that pocket. So he could play for those. If indeed they go. Let's not forget he was in control Six. in that world final early on, playing superbly on the first day. Selby hung on and then, of course, turned it round on the second day. Higgins did mount a little comeback towards Seven. the end, and it was that business with the roll into the black, which uh, thankfully didn't really have any bearing on things. Selby lost the frame, came out, made a century next frame, and of course, won 18 15. Proper snooker match, wasn't it, between two great players? Oh. Well, it was a superb match. I could not see Higgins losing from the position he was in and the way he was playing. He was playing superbly. But somehow, as you say, Selby hung on and then started playing like Higgins was playing earlier. And of course, it's bound to affect your opponent. You see a train coming at you. Great players. Searching. Higgins just getting his arm going a little here, taking these loose reds. Not bothered about the black at the moment, and all, the, all those two reds. Overrun slightly there, wanted to be straighter on this red to the left corner. about the right side of the blue. Oh, 
Hasn't played for the pink as yet because it would probably go on to the brown spot. Pink spot looks to be held. Just getting his arm going a little here, taking these loose reds. Not bothered about the black at the moment, and all those, those two reds. Oh, we run slightly there, wanted to be straighter on this red to the left corner. about the right side of the blue. Hasn't played for the pink as yet because it would probably go on to the brown spot. Pink spot looks to be held. Decided to play for the pink. Because we saw him at the World Cup, but uh, and him and Anthony McGill looked a formidable team, but they didn't actually get out of the group, which was a surprise, really. They finished behind Thailand and Northern Ireland. Since then, he's played at the Hong Kong Masters, the big invitation event. He was 4-2 up to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last eight, lost 5-4. This may have gone wrong. Yeah, didn't go as intended. Still has a red to both middles. But wanted to be on something a lot easier than these two reds. He moved the red away from the pink spot, fully expecting to be on reds, easy reds. Needs a good shot here, tight angle. Oh. <laughs> First it was in, then it was out. In again. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Sixty-one in front with the pink. So another red required. Yes, yeah, it's needed two or three chances this frame. But his opponent, like David said, hasn't put him under any pressure. Every time he took a red on, it was a difficult one or it wasn't ideal. 46. Hasn't got away with anything when he's, when he's attempted. So it is going to be 4 0. And a nice little nudge on the red to free the black. Six. Six to one. And could very well be another century here.
crowd really lapping this one up. Six to eight. Yes, you can have four nils that, you know, you could have four black ball frames that are Six close. This nine. has not been close at all, this match. It's been completely one-sided. Oh. Well, misses the black on 69, but uh, it doesn't matter. He's done a lot of damage in the first half of this contest. Breaks of 72, 129, 63 and 69 from Scotland's John Higgins. Feeling very good indeed as he heads off to the interval. One more frame needed for victory. Then he leads Lou Hyacin by four frames to nil. Already that shot tells us that things have not improved for Lou Hyacin. It, uh, that could be his last shot, you know. Yep, very well, well could be the way that Higgins is playing. I think he, he came out there deciding to have a go. But his long potting hasn't been there. Well, no potting's been there, really. I'm sure he can play a lot better than this. You don't win the under-21s championship at 14, 15 or whatever he was. If he's, if he's not a great player, he just hasn't been able to handle... Because we saw him at the World Cup, but uh, and him and Anthony McGill looked a formidable team, but they didn't actually get out of the group, which was a surprise, really. They finished behind Thailand and Northern Ireland. Since then, he's played at the Hong Kong Masters, the big invitation event. He was 4-2 up to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last eight, lost 5-4. This may have gone wrong. Yeah, didn't go as intended. Still has a red to both middles. But wanted to be on something a lot easier than these two reds. He moved the red away from the pink spot, fully expecting to be on reds, easy reds. Needs a good shot here, tight angle. Oh. <laughs> First it was in, then it was out. Back in again. And this time finished a little straight. I'm going to look at those two reds just below the pink, see if they're a plant to that right corner. I'm going to consider the more difficult pink. And again, this could go wrong. And that's if the pink goes. No, nope, doesn't go. So, see the brown. The easy blue gets him the red, but where's the next red coming from? Played it with some safety in mind, but he's pushed a red on. Not easy to get to a colour from it, though. Oh, that's a better angle. And it could well come down for those two reds. Could have done with just a little bit harder. 
18. Not happy with that. He's on the red, but not ideally. Yep, that was a poor positional shot it's from blue to red. You'd be disappointed with that, Higgins. And then that's a poor safety. That cue ball should have been closer to that ball cushion. He's just suffering at the moment. And if you can see the red, well, that really is a disaster. Higgins straight back in again. What? And the kiss could have been kinder. going from bad to worse. Oh, has he been fortunate? Not left an easy red. Nothing goes there. So I may play the ball to the bolt corner and try and cover that red over the right corner pocket. Just in case he misses. Oh, stroke of luck there for Higgins. Just 5 4. This may have gone wrong. Yeah, didn't go as intended. Still has a red to so both middles. But wanted to be on something a lot easier than these two reds. He moved the red away from the pink spot, fully expecting to be on reds, easy reds. It's a good shot here. Tight angle. Oh. Wow. First it was in, then it was out. Back in again. And this time finished a little straight. I'm going to look at those two reds just below the pink, see if they're a plant to that right corner. I'm going to consider the more difficult pink. And again, this could go wrong. And that's if the pink goes. No, nope, doesn't go. So, see the brown. The easy blue gets him the red, but where's the next red coming from? Played it with some safety in mind, but he's pushed a red on. Not easy to get to a colour from it, though. Oh, 
Now it's easy to pop the red in that pocket. <laughs> and OK in the other one. He's still young, he's only 19, but he, he's been on the tour and off the tour again. He's a former World Under-21 champion, he won that when he was 14. Today, if he gets to the final. Six. And some tough matches to come. Next opponent, if he wins, Chris Wakelin. Mark Williams Seven. is in that section as well. Mark Allen in that half. Judd Trump actually in that half as well. But first things first, get this one out of the way. This black stopping reds going into the pocket makes things a lot easier now. Punch. Cannon the wrong red. He fully expected to be on the red to the right corner. May have to take the red to the middle if he can see enough of it. This looks good. Just the right amount of left hand side on the cue ball. To leave himself perfect on this red. Thirty-four. Forty-five pounds the difference, Four. so doesn't need many. Forty-one. No, it's been every inch of whitewash this match. Luhaishan struggled and in this... He, he came out there deciding to have a go. But his long potting hasn't been there. Well, no potting's been there, really. I'm sure he can play a lot better than this. You don't win the under-21s championship at 14, 15 or whatever he was. If he's, if he's not a great player, he just hasn't been able to handle his nerves today, I think. Big thing, though, playing in front of a big crowd on TV against one of the best players that's ever lived. Oh, didn't want to catch the Reds, and that could be a little bit of a reprieve for Loatian. Six. Yeah, it's worth saying that last week in the qualifiers of the European Masters, Lou Hyshen beat Robert Milkins 4-2. Milkins had two centuries, so Milkins was playing great stuff, but he still beat him. So it's a good win. John Higgins, six. And Higgins has broken down, so it's not over yet. The only thing I can say about Lou Hyshen is that he has had a go. He hasn't been afraid. He's took the balls on. OK, they haven't gone in, but you need a little bit of bottle to be able to take the balls on. And there's another one. And he hasn't been fortunate again. Higgins straight back in with a scoring chance. One. 
little bit of check on the cue ball there to avoid the reds. And he's okay on the blue. Six. Well, that's surprising miss there from Higgins. But again, nothing easy for Lou Haitian. Any pressure. Every time he took a red on, it was a difficult one or it wasn't Four ideal. Hasn't got away with anything when he's, when he's attempted. It's going to be 4 0. And a nice little right. nudge on the red to free the black. Could very well be another century here. And the crowd really lapping this one up. Six to eight. Yes, you can have four nils that, you know, you could have four black ball frames that are Six close. This has not been close at all, this match. It's been completely one sided. Well, misses the black on 69, but uh, it doesn't matter. He's done a lot of damage in the first half of this contest. Breaks of 72, 129, 63 and 69 from Scotland's John Higgins. Feeling very good indeed as he heads off to the interval. One more frame needed for victory then. He leads Lou Hyershen by four frames to nil. Already that shot tells us that things have not improved for Lou Hyershen. It uh, could be his last shot, you know. Yep, very well could be the way that Higgins is playing. I think he, he came out there deciding to have a go. But his long potting hasn't been there. Well, no potting's been there, really. I'm sure he can play a lot better than this. You don't win the under-21s championship at 14, 15 or whatever it was. If he's, if he's not a great player, he just hasn't been able to handle his nerves today, I think. Big thing, though, playing in front of a big crowd on TV against one of the best players that's ever lived. Oh, didn't want to catch the Reds, and that could be a little bit of a reprieve for Loatian. Six. Yeah, it's worth saying that last week in the qualifiers of the European Masters, Lou Hyshen beat Robert Milkins 4-2. Milkins had two centuries, so Milkins was playing great stuff, but he still beat him. So it's a good win. As I say, he was already a little bit nervy, I think, at the start, which is understandable, but if he's coming to the table in the match thinking he's absolutely got to make the most of the chance, otherwise he won't get another shot, then he'll be under even more pressure. And this frame may be over, frankly. Well, he'd be expecting to win from here now after that. Beautiful split. Fifty two. Yeah, could have done with it just coming a little bit further as Lou looks on there, hoping that he gets a chance.
53. And again, perfectly played. Got the speed of the table. Absolutely perfect. So, 72 break in the first frame, and already looking good to make it 2 0 with a big break here. Yes, the blue needed. Can concentrate on making his first century of this event. Of course, just after winning this <laughs> title last season, he went to Coventry and won the Champion of Champions. So within the space of a couple of weeks, he'd won 300,000, none of which counted towards his ranking. 